I'm here this afternoon to present you uh, the show that we've done for uh, the events for Electronic Arts uh, for the game Anthem, where the, um, the goal will be to, um, to bring a monster out of the screen and to interact with the audience. So um, I'm going first to explain what we do in Solid Track in France and how we use virtual production for the movie industry. Because the background for us started in movie industry. Can you change? So first, Solid Track, it's a, it's a solution to, uh, to make the tracking with an optical system. And we use this system for different several movies. Um, we like to, uh, to help directors to see and visualize the, the visual effect in real time. It's why we create this technology as well for. So, um, so how we, uh, how we uh, describe the virtual production for us is like that. We, uh, we, we use different techniques for the tracking camera. So we can use motion captures, basically. We can also use encoders, like uh, Stipes and, uh, and uh, some other um, uh, some other company can make some encoders, like uh, microfilms. We stream the data, the 3D protocol, to, uh, to a game engine. Here it's uh, zero density. And uh, we do the live compositing inside the game engine or outside the game engine. So basically it's this. So we, uh, we have two markets, movie and broadcast. So this is a few pictures for what we do on set. So Basically, the environment is really flexible. It's really hard to, uh, to bring any, uh, any encoder screen there because uh, it takes so long to, uh, to, be, uh, to be ready on time. So we like to using uh, optical tracking for that to be fast and efficient. And uh, the technology is based like that. We add uh, another camera on the main camera. It's a monocular uh, tracking system. With this camera, we can, uh, we can find the position of the, of the crane, and we can do the live comp for the, for the directors. So, and all the crew on set. So it works like that. It's a, it's a live compositing on, 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 on the movie set. So this is a few examples we've done in the past few years. So, so as we can see, uh, the background is blue on this movie, and we need to extend the background to be, as I said, to be, uh, to be uh, the, um, the, the 3D environment that, that they want. On this particular case, all the, all the background is made on Motion Builder. The difference between the broadcast and the movie industry is the fact that the broadcast, we need the final, final uh, tracking plus the final compositing with no latency and perfectly fluid. On the movie, we cannot gen lock the camera. It's time code. So we cannot gen lock the render engine. So the thing is, we do have some uh, tiny effect on the, res on the result, but that doesn't really matter for the directors. The most important thing for everybody is to understand where they are and to place the actors and to understand all the framing because we need to record the final result and give that for the post-production team. So this is a few examples. We work on Warcraft, Alice from Dolan, and Rogue One, so one of the last that we done that few years ago. So uh, here it's another device that we create to, um, to, uh, to help the crew uh, understand uh, how to move uh, and how they can build the set on, the, on stage. So we call that Mr. Melies. It's a virtual ca camera. It's a solid track combined on one unique device, really small, really small screen and, and uh, controllers. So here, it's a, it's a system, it's Mr. Amelius on set uh, during the movie Rogue One for Star Wars. And uh, <coughs> what, how we use that? We use uh, this device because we need to, uh, to, uh, to understand how big is the uh, X-Wing on set. And uh, for that, we, uh, we, uh, we took Mr. Melies, we be there like that. And, uh, and I display the X-Wing, so if you can play the video. <laughs> So what we do now is we combine everything. We want to combine optical tracking. We do have a really good expertise on the movie set. We bring all this expertise on the studio 
And then we can have a crane, dolly robotic, steady camera. Everything can be merged on one Unix studio. So we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we create a studio in Paris to, uh, to, uh, to, to make this happen and to explain that the real-time VFX is possible. So <coughs> this is uh, one studio uh, in Paris uh, that we, uh, that we uh, created in a few months ago. And we, uh, we bring our partners called Microfilm for the Dolly Robotic. And we work with Sublab for the robot, the big armed robot. Everything is it's combined inside solid track. We compute the, all the position of the camera and we send the, the, the camera position inside zero density. Okay, let's go now to uh, electronic art events. So on all the experience that we have on the movie and broadcast, uh, the Mill uh, company based in New York uh, came to us and explained we uh, do have a project where we need to bring a monster out of the screen and we don't know how to, mm, to make it. Uh, we know how to make the graphic side, but we don't know how we can make it it happen. So they came to me and we discussed how they want it. So what, um, what we, the starting point is uh, just this. We have a, a visual about what they want, the, a rough explanation. Then on this rough explanation, I need to, uh, to, to propose some, uh, some technical, uh, some technical uh, ideas. So what I know is the fact that the project will be on the, on the movie, uh, on, the, on, on the theaters, on big theaters. Uh, I don't know the light. Uh, so uh, because I don't know how will be the light, I cannot, I cannot propose something uh, using optical tracking. So on this project, uh, we decide to use encoders, uh, encoder systems. So two axes, uh, one, two, pan and tilt and zoom. We work with a microfilm for that. It's really compact and easy to bring on, the, on location. So this is uh, the microfilm equipment. As you can see, it's really small and compact, and it's full encoded. <coughs> so we bring that in, uh, in Los Angeles. This is roughly what we want the show will be. So two axes, uh, one view, wide screen, closer screen, uh, closer, uh, closer uh, lenses, and we visualize something like that, roughly. Then we need to decide and define how big will be the monster. We know, of course, how it's big on the, on the game, but in reality, we need to define that. So we, we use uh, references like uh, Pacific Rhymes to, to, uh, to have a, a rough idea. Then we discuss with the guy from Electronic Arts to, to get the right scale. So the monster will be big like that. So 14 meters high. The screen will be is represented by the red, red square behind the monster. Uh, then after we uh, we did um, uh, a storyboard and uh, an animatic for uh, for make this uh, this result more visual. So <coughs> on this you can see what we want to achieve. So we want to have the monster coming out, uh, kind of uh, players going out the screen also fighting together and going back again. So out and in. So on this particular kind of uh, references, we already done a movie called Monster Call, where we, uh, where we play with a big monster. So we already have a big, e big experience. So this experience has been done on this, um, on this movie. So it was in 2015. And uh, here we, uh, we just uh, uh, be on location for this movie. And we bring these characters there. So like this, we can perfectly frame the head of the monster. We did exactly the same thing for this event. <coughs> so we, uh, we decide together with, um, with the mill and electronic art to bring the monster really low and to just have the torso going out. So after all these uh, this, uh, this ideas, we need to simulate everything and make that on the small scale to validate the workflow. So on this video, you can see uh, I play with a camera, I put the monster, so the animation is not finished, it's just the blocking part, so it just pauses. But that gives us uh, the complete workflow, so we validate the fact that we can make it like that. So then 
when we show this video to the mill electronic arts and we validate everything, everything went to zero density perfectly, very fluid. We go in location and now we need to set up everything on the, on the real scale. So <coughs> this is the equipment that we bring with us, so it's really compact. It's also a, a good reason that we like to using microfilm because it's very compact, easy to set up. We talk about maybe one cable. We can also almost go to wireless. The problem with the wireless, as you know, it's a cell phone and everything can interact, so we still prefer to use cable. And uh, when we went there, we need to calibrate the lens. That's why we're using the big checkerboard over there. You have to calibrate the zoom lens. It's a big zoom lens. We know that we are going to be really tight on the monster. So we calibrate the lens. We set up the crane, not the crane, but the, the pan and tilt head. And uh, in the show, we also da know that we need to be live. So everything has to be bulletproof and works so perfectly in terms of performance and, and fluidity. So we make a lot adjustment of the scene, especially when the monster coming out. So this is roughly how it looks like uh, on the backstage. So this is a remote to control the, the pan and tilt head. So all the effect, all the particle effect was on the monster, cost a lot performance for the computer. This is the main, seriously, it took us uh, maybe all the week to adjust that to be perfectly free. But you work so well at the end. So next video, please. And uh, <coughs> yeah, so so this is why uh, what uh, the broadcast uh, YouTube uh, channel can see in real time. Of course, the audience cannot see the monster coming out. It's uh, also <laughs> something that we didn't solve because uh, it was impressive for the people to watch on YouTube, but of course the audience ju just have a feedback of the screen. So we need to think how we can help to be more impressive. And this is the day of the show. It was I took uh, with my smartphone this angle. So yeah, this, uh, this part of the events will be at the end of the all the presentation of the game. So they present all the game and then they play the mixed reality at the end. So this is what the audience see. The, of course, the final. Yeah. So this is what the, on the YouTube channel of EA Electronic Arts people can see in real time. So thank you for, uh, for your intention. <laughs> thank you for microfilm, thank you for the meal. Zero density for the integration inside the game engine. And yeah, <laughs> thank you.